It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how the Fuji X-H2S, which I'm filming on right now, compares to the Fuji X-H2. And there's two things that I'm really gonna talk about. And one is resolution, the other is autofocus performance. But in this video, we're gonna focus on resolution. And so without further ado, I'm gonna show you some images that I took. I shot the camera side by side and I wanted to see for myself what I could expect out of these two cameras. Now, I am an X-H2S fan, all in, I bought it, and because of that camera, I sold my Canon R5. So I then transitioned from being a Canon shooter for my professional work, even though I, I use it during my day job, for my school district job, but for my freelance clients, I thought this camera will take care of all my needs. Then the X-H2 came along and I said, you know what, that may have the resolution that the Canon R5 offered that I loved out of the Canon R5. So I bought two. Now, um, I was home on a weekend. I was out on the patio, these first set of images, I was taking pictures of my dog on the patio. I set both cameras on the ground and uh, I was just tapping the touch shutter uh, at the same exact moment. Now, when I do that, I don't have two identical lenses, so I was shooting with the 56 mil, and I was shooting with the 16 to 55, and I had that one at 55 mil, so 55 and 56 mil, and I had them at f2.8, so comparable aperture. And so what I found interestingly and anecdotally was the X-H2S was a little faster to trigger the shot, uh, but roughly those images were taken at the same exact moment. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm looking at these images on a, uh, a blog that I put up. I, I recently launched a website called beautifulfuji.com. I'll put the link up there. It's kind of a secret where I don't have any pressure to do anything for social media, YouTube, or Instagram. It's just for me to blog my thoughts. So if you're interested in that authentic journey, head over there. Um, these images are there. And you know what, I think I'll post the raw files if you wanna take a look at those as well. So the first images are my dog chewing on this bone. And when I first look at the images, they appear, aside from slight differences in framing, they appear about identical. And then if you crop in and zoom in, really you start to see a little tiny bit of difference of resolution in the fold of the tongue inside the mouth and the kind of the texture on the bone. However, there's a slight difference here because I'm using two different lenses. I'm tapping the screen, and so I'm probably getting slightly different focal points. And so um, it just may be that the, the X-H2 and the X-H2S were focused on slightly different places. However, the X-H2 does have a little more detail, crispness, sharpness, and texture, particularly seen in that, in that mouth area, which is a very, very small part of the photo. So it's very, very hard to see unless you dive in and pixel peep. But I knew that wasn't really a legitimate test. It wasn't the same lenses. It was, it was uh, subject to kind of whim and chance and uh, coincidence about when I actually clicked the, uh, clicked the shutter button. So I thought I will take the cameras with me. We were out, we were running some errands and I saw this Ferris wheel. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna focus on the Ferris wheel on the top left corner. I'm gonna put the focal point exactly there. And, and I'm gonna switch lenses so I use the exact same lens. And let's see if I have a note here. I think it's the 56 millimeter lens. I believe that's the lens I use. I'll, I'll put uh, the text of the actual lens. And so I took um, the pictures uh, from the same vantage point, the same lens, the same uh, composition. Uh, same recipe, I was using the Pacific Blues film recipe. I shot those images. And so I, I knew I would have to crop in significantly based on my pictures of the dog. So I cropped in and I would say there's a touch more saturation in the colors on the side of the Ferris wheel carts. That's one area where I see a little more color out of the X-H2, very, very minimal and a little bit more detail in certain places on like the details of these Ferris wheel carts. Again, very, very minimal, very, very subtle. And so I thought, you know what, that's, that's a good test, but let's, let's do another test. And so I went and I took my Jeep to this parking garage. I, I knew the setting sun would be behind the Jeep and I, I thought it'd be kind of a cool dramatic picture. So I put the, um, 
the uh, camera down on the ground. Again, here I'm using the 16 to uh, 55 lens. I'm swapping lenses onto both camera bodies. So they're set on the ground on the same spot. I'm, no handheld shots, just touching the, the, the shutter button uh, while the camera's on the ground. And in this case, I honestly, I can't tell the cameras apart. Uh, maybe it's because the subject is a little bit backlit. It's a little shadowy and dark. I can't tell, I can't find a single place, oh, except for, except for the patch of highlight where the sun is hitting the asphalt or the concrete of the parking garage floor right under the vehicle. I feel like the Fuji X-H2 has a little more to offer and the X-H2S is a little less detail, less crisp, maybe a little blown out, maybe. Um, but very, very difficult to tell these shots apart. So there were three instances where I, I set apart, and again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not even a photographer by schooling. I'm somebody who's passionate about this art. I know that cameras make a difference in photographers' hands. Photographers can change people's lives with the images they've taken. And so with that mission, um, I usually, when I talk about cameras, I talk about use, price, and performance, uh, those kind of three keyword mantras. And so if you're thinking about getting the X-H2, so, I mean, if you're thinking about getting the X-H2S, yes, please do it. You'll be happy. You'll be amazed. Again, I sold my Canon R5 and I went all in on this, which is an APS-C sensor. That's how incredible this camera is. But if you're thinking about getting the X-H2 because it's 40 megapixels, I don't see it. I, 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 I want to be honest. I, I just don't see the difference enough. I, maybe, no, not even a 1% difference, like a half a percent difference is what you're seeing. Now you think 26 megapixels, you're going to get, you think you're going to get, uh, you know, like a third more resolution. That's nowhere close to the truth. It's, it's not that. It's, it's like a factor of a percent or a, a fraction of a percent that I did in my unscientific test. That was the painful truth for me. And so I'm going to be doing a, another video on the autofocus and ultimately um, tell you why I sent it back, which I did. Got my money back from BNH. So thank you, BNH. Um, but I'm going to go into the autofocus issues that I experienced. And I, I'm just trying to be honest with my experience. I love Fuji. I'm all in on Fuji. Um, and if you're offended, if you're bothered and you think I'm an idiot, that that's all good. I can just say from my experience, this was not the camera for me. Um, the X-H2S is amazing. I would trust it over and over and over again uh, in professional situations. The X-H2 is cheaper, uh, but it doesn't offer more unless you're really into the 8K video, which I, I think is fairly amazing. But in terms of resolution, this is not, well, this, this is the X-H2S. In terms of resolution, the X-H2, in my experience, not the camera you're looking for. And so um, you should check out Omar Gonzalez has a great video where he pixel peeps from like the X-T2, like a 16 megapixel, a megapixel, a megapixel sensor to 24 to 26 to 40. And he really struggles to see the difference. Um, he points out things that I can't see on a YouTube video. Um, so that shows you how small a difference that it, there is. Uh, you can also, you know, check out Jared Z has a video on his experience with the X-H2. I just don't see it. And I hope that you are happy with your Fuji cameras. And I just knew that $2,000 was not really, uh, $2,000 on the promise of a 40 megapixel sensor that would be significantly different, uh, was not significantly different. So that's not money that I would spend on that camera. That's just me. All right. Thank you for watching. I'm going to do another video on the autofocus and another video on why I re decided to return it. But I hope this has been helpful for you. Take a link, uh, take a look at the blog, take a look at the raw images, look at those pixel peep all you want. And I'll see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, comment, uh, if this has been helpful, but most of all comment, I appreciate the comments. Thanks.